as children uh, when we start reading one of the first kinds of books that we read are uh, detective fiction books or crime fiction books because there is something in them that appeals to us in particular there is a sense of excitement that we feel when we read these books because of the action packed plots the fantastic mysteries that are created in these books and also the intelligent ways in which the mysteries are solved usually by a single detective or a group of people and once we reach the conclusion we feel a sense of satisfaction that is that makes us not just happy at the fact that uh, justice has been served but also a sense of satisfaction at the fact that we have finished reading a very well crafted work something that has been written specifically to please a reader i'd like to talk uh, about crime fiction today and uh, not only about the details about why it is important as a genre of literature why we study it but also why crime fiction is such a popular genre why is it that almost any culture that reads and writes has got some version of crime fiction which has been published or sometimes orally narrated over time why is it to repeat what i said in the when i opened that we are interested in crime fiction as children and why is it that leaving aside other genres crime fiction continues to be one of the most popular categories of fiction for well over 200 years and it does not look like its popularity is going to reduce at any point for this i think we will need to look at the origins of crime fiction and also at how this genre has developed over time furthermore i will also try and touch upon not just english language crime fiction but also crime fiction written in other languages especially bengali but also in several other languages from other continents now in this we can see that crime fiction when we look at it is a very simple genre what does it involve it involves the solving of a mystery some kind of crime or some kind of puzzle is shown at the beginning of a crime fiction book there are a series of hints or clues that are provided to the reader and to the detective and finally these clues are used to solve the mystery and there is usually a concluding section in which we as readers are told about not just how the original crime was committed or how the original puzzle was created but also about how the solution was reached now this is a trope or this is a format which has been used in stories since time immemorial since uh we are discussing crime fiction with english literature in mind i think that we can think about early examples of western civilization on which most of the english literature is based 
we should think about early examples in western civilization that can be considered to be prototypes of crime fiction the earliest example of course is um, a story from ancient greece the story of oedipus who becomes the king of thebes and is asked to solve the murder of its earlier king who had died mysteriously after leaving the city just before oedipus came to it in this in this story oedipus becomes a kind of detective looking at clues trying to find out where the old king had gone and then finally reaching a horrifying conclusion that is that oedipus had accidentally murdered the old king due to a quarrel at a crossroads and that he had come to thebes become its ruler and then married its queen not realizing that the old king who he had murdered was his own father and the woman that he had married was his mother now this is a classic example of a detective story where the detective himself is the murderer and in this case the detective is unaware of it which is why when the conclusion is presented to us there is shock but there is also a sense of admiration for whoever created this story the story is anonymous it's part of greek mythology but we generally read it in one of the various plays that uh, were written in that period specifically a play by sophocles called oedipus the king and when we when we come to this horrifying conclusion we do feel a sense of admiration for whoever originally thought of this plot because in many ways this is a perfect crime and it is only discovered because the detective is unaware of the fact that he is the perpetrator of the crime that is the detective is unaware of the fact that he has committed the crime himself and therefore when he tries to solve the crime he realizes that he himself is the murderer but this is just one example uh of a story that has been considered to be part of detective fiction uh after this there are several uh stories written during the middle ages written during the early modern period uh and even during the 18th century in which a mystery is presented and someone has to go and solve it in the middle ages this could be in the form of a an adventure story uh, often called a romance in which a knight is asked to complete a quest or a search to solve a particular mystery in the early modern period uh, better known as the european renaissance we have individuals who are travelers who come across various mysteries and who have to solve them an example of this is um, a work by thomas nash published in 1594 called the unfortunate traveler later on of course uh, the crime fiction novel starts looking more and more like what we call today the detective story and this really starts in the 19th century with the rise of a class of novel called 
the gothic novel. In this genre, made popular by authors like Horace Walpole and Anne Radcliffe, we find heroes or heroines stuck in these huge dark castles, usually very far from any inhabited areas in which they explore the castle and while doing so they find the solution of a mystery or they find a mystery which they must later solve. Many of the ideas or many of the features of Gothic fiction find themselves included in modern crime fiction. Uh, an excellent example of that uh, is actually not a text novel but the Batman comic book series in which the city of Gotham is an example of a dark, dangerous place and the name Gotham itself suggests the word Gothic which in this sense refers to something that is dangerous, that must be explored and most important that must be cured of the problems that are facing it. But to go back to the 19th century, uh, the first major English writer or the first major, major writer in English uh, to, to envisage um, stories that would be considered crime fiction is Edgar Allan Poe, a US American author who is famous for several works that not only involve crime but also horror and therefore um, in Bengal in particular if you read Edgar Allan Poe as a child you were very likely to read it in a cheap anthology called Tales of Mystery and Terror which became very popular in India from the 1980s onwards. And in the case of Edgar Allan Poe, he writes several stories that would be considered to be crime fiction stories, but his most famous creation is the detective C. Auguste Dupin, who is shown as a thinker who is capable of solving mysteries by sitting in an armchair, thinking about what he has seen, thinking about how people around him are behaving, and by, do, and by linking all the actions and all the dialogues that he has heard, Dupin is able to solve three mysteries, two of which are quite famous. The first being the story, the murders in the Rue Morgue, and the second being the story, the purloined letter. Dupa is the first example of a detective, a person whose job it is solely to solve mysteries. We are never told what what else Dupa does for a living? Uh, he doesn't seem to do it for money, true, but it seems that his only major purpose in life is to solve mysteries. And this sets a trend which leads to the creation of the professional detective, to which we will come a little later. Now, Edgar Allan Poe is not the only English writer who have, or as I said, English, uh, you know, writer who writes in English, uh, who uh, comes up with the idea of a detective. There are other authors 
who are also writing stories that could be considered to be detective stories or crime fiction. An early example is Wilkie Collins who in the 1850s writes a novel called The Moonstone which becomes popular due to the emergence of a professional detective and a mystery that actually start, begins and closes the novel. Similarly, Charles Dickens uses um, detectives in a couple of his uh, in a couple of his works, uh, most famously Inspector Bucket in the novel Bleak House, and perhaps uh, the in the last work that he began, which he uh, quite clearly uh, designed to be a detective story because he entitled it The Mystery of Edwin Drood. In that we have the creation of a crime story but sadly we, had, we do not know how it would progress because Dickens died before he could finish it. But these are just precursors to other writers who from the end of the 19th century started writing novels or short stories that explicitly featured detectives and which were only concerned with the solution of a mystery. In the earlier cases that we talked about, in the case of the Greek stories, the medieval romances, the early modern travel narratives, the Gothic novels, and even to some extent the mid 19th century or Victorian novels, in all of these crime fiction was only part of the subject of the book or the work because the mystery was always part of the general plot of the works and solving the mystery would lead to the conclusion of the work but it would not be the only thing involved. And it is here that the writers of the late uh, 19th century, so in the 1880s and 1890s, writers wrote stories that only dealt with crime and the solving of crime. So solving the mystery was the only thing that the text hinged around. And of course, the first and greatest example of an author in that category is Arthur Conan Doyle, who is probably known to all of us as the creator of the Sherlock Holmes stories. Now, Conan Doyle comes up with an idea that uh, he popularizes He's not the only person to come up with the idea, but his writing style and his plots were clearly better than most of the writers of his times and therefore he managed to turn his detective Sherlock Holmes into a popular institution to such an extent that when Conan Doyle grew tired of writing Sherlock Holmes stories, he tried to finish the series by making Sherlock Holmes die in a short story called The Final Problem. Unfortunately, there was such a public backlash about this that Conan Doyle was forced to bring him back a year later in a short story called The Empty House. And the resurrection of Sherlock Holmes is actually a one of the first examples of a fictional character becoming so important in popular culture that it was impossible for the author of that character to stop writing about him. Now, 
the Sherlock Holmes stories are known for clearly for a certain structure. At the beginning of the story, the mystery is outlined. If an event takes place, such as a murder or a theft, that is narrated to the, to the detective by someone who comes to visit him, usually a client, but sometimes uh, he also reads about it in the newspapers. Then, the process of solving the crime begins with the detective going out, going to the scene of the crime, examining the place for clues, talking to witnesses who might have who might be involved with the crime and then coming to a first conclusion and if it is possible to trap the criminal, setting the trap for a criminal, waiting for the trap to be sprung and then once the criminal is arrested, the detective provides an explanation of his methods and tells us how and who committed the crime if the murderer has or, or the thief has not already been captured. And this becomes the standard format of the crime fiction text, whether it is a beat short story or novel, um, for well over a century. And while there have been many great works that have not stuck to this format, the majority of crime fiction has stuck to it because it is a structure that readers can easily follow and it is a structure that readers can easily enjoy. And that perhaps brings me to the major point that I wish to talk about here, which is the question of enjoyment. If you remember the episode I just mentioned, uh, which is that of uh, Colin Doyle being forced to continue writing Sherlock Holmes stories because of popular demand, this actually becomes just one of many examples of the popularity of crime fiction. There are also certain social and political factors that make English language crime fiction very popular at that point. First, in the 19th century, there are more and more people who learn how to read due to the various education acts that are passed in England at that time. Also, there is the rise of modern means of communication like the railways, which at that point still took several hours to, to cover and many early railway passengers wanted to spend their time by reading something, not the very heavy novels that were usually available in Victorian England, but shorter works which they could finish on one train journey or perhaps two. And this actually gives rise to what is known as the railway library, which played a major part in the popularization of crime fiction. But social and political factors alone do not explain the popularity of crime fiction. For that, we must look at certain features of crime fiction that make it such a popular genre. And again, as I had mentioned at the beginning of this talk, as children we are drawn to crime fiction because the mysteries are exciting, the way in which the detective tries to solve the crime, that is exciting, and when we get to the conclusion, we feel a sense of satisfaction that the evil people have been punished, usually, and that justice has been served in some way. In addition, if we are unable to guess the conclusion, if we are unable to guess uh, who the criminal is, once the detective explains his methods, which is quite standard in the crime fiction of this period, once the detective explains his methods, we are left 
with a sense of wonder at this because the detective has done something that we have not. And that makes us interested in this genre. That makes us interested in reading more of this. So, so far, what we have shown is that crime fiction is a genre that is hugely popular both in the past and even today. We have traced the roots of crime fiction uh, in the Western tradition by looking at uh, certain examples from various literary periods and we have also uh, briefly discussed how in the 19th century the rise of popular fiction leads to the rise of the crime fiction uh, short story or novel in terms of its popularity and from there when the 20th century starts, crime fiction becomes an unstoppably popular genre that continues to influence us even today, not just in our reading habits, but also in terms of society, culture and politics. Thank you.